to call this the MQFF show. It might be a one-hit wonder. Uh, we'll discover all, well, some of the highlights of the 2012 Melbourne Queer Film Festival. And I'm Danae. I'm joined by Lisa Daniel, Festival Director. Lisa. Morning. Midday. Hello. Morning, afternoon. It's one past 12, so that's officially afternoon. afternoon. Some people it might It feels be- like it's 5am. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I might look like it's 5am too. <laughs> Some people might be expecting the Joy 94 point news, uh, but there is none. So we are the news. Festival news. news. Yep. That's much more important than whatever K Rudd's doing or Julia's not doing or who's fighting with who and, you know, that whole political soap opera palaver. It is a bit of a soap opera. Let's take a break from that. Let's talk about films. Well, one of the golden rules of radio is never ask your guests how they are, but I'm going to ask, how are you? I'm pretty good, actually. It's, I'm clinging on to the back of a very fast-moving train as hard and as securely as I can. Because now that tickets are on sale, you just kind of keep up with it. So, And tickets are selling well. In fact, I think we've only got about 150 opening night tickets left. So, Well, the Melbourne Queer Film Festival launched the program on Wednesday. Today is Friday, as far yeah, as I can tell. It is. So tickets went on sale yesterday. Yeah, pretty much yesterday morning. Although a few eagle-eyed punters got in, got... Onto the website around about midnight on Wednesday night, just after launch, and there was a few purchases then, so good on them. Well, that's that um, social media element yeah. of the world now. Yeah. Uh, you can, True. I, I've seen photos of the launch, I've seen tweets and posts and all sorts of things, so people are buying tickets. We'll talk more about uh, some of the highlights of the festival a little bit later. Should we give but- dates? I suppose we should yeah, give dates. Sure. So given given the launch was like two days ago, mm-hmm. we're what, about two and a half weeks out from the festival, March 15 to March 25, with our secret back by popular demand on March 26. Oh, not a secret oh. anymore. So we're still a couple of, you know, two and a half, yeah, what, two weeks out from the fest and yeah. we're selling really well. So, uh, you know, don't dilly-dally. No, um, people often think that that's a bit of spin, don't they? They, they do, you know, actually, like, but then oh, they come crying to me later saying, have you not got anything for opening night? No. What what are the reasons that you can't sell 8,000 tickets? Well, we have had a change in venue this year. So we have moved from the Astor that uh, literally had about 900 seats in it. Uh, and we have now gone to Acme, which has got about 560. So yeah. anyone with a little bit of mathematical skill <laughs> will see the little shortfall there, uh, which is not, you know, look, it's not great for a not-for-profit to have less tickets mm. to sell, but we are very appreciative of the City of Melbourne for looking away for about 15 years yeah, right. as we held our opening night in another city, yes. which I will not name now. No. But it wasn't the city of Melbourne. So, we, you know... It, it is it's, a change. It's been time... There's, there's a, a terrible lack of good venues in Melbourne in terms of good size. Do you, um, do you mean Melbourne, like, right in the city? Yeah, city of Melbourne, so CBD. So anything within the city of Melbourne borders, very, very difficult in terms of good size venue. We, you know, we need something around about 1,000, maybe 1,200 mm just doesn't exist and you know there are theatre venues but they're always booked out years ahead and Mm. they don't have proper projection facilities and all that sort of stuff so Acme it is so we're we're interlocking both the cinemas and using both of those but it still only takes us up to about 560 so um, yeah so you really you know you really do have to get in early it will sell out I reckon it'll sell out by sort of early next week. So in case you're listening to us on the Joy 94.9 iPhone app or online, uh, we'll try to keep the acronyms to a minimum today, but we will talk about MQFF because it's a little bit shorter than the Melbourne Queer Film Festival. Yes. And And ACME. Yes, ACME is the Australian Centre for the Moving Image, which of course is just off Federation Square. Which is fantastic, which is where we will have the opening night on the 15th of March and then 10 days of around 162 films. Yes, 91 sessions. Yep. So we today, uh, Lisa and Danae, will be talking about uh, some of some of the highlights because there is such a lot. Uh, during the festival and a couple of filmmakers will join us uh, one on the phone and uh, shortly we'll be talking with Grant Grant Cicluna Cicluna yeah he's had an exciting ride recently we'll get him to come in and talk to us Grant's film is called The Wilding uh, 15 minutes short yeah good parole board would love that what would you have done I need a hundred words what happened and why can you move time to Eucalypt why Gab's wearing him down Put them with the pre-trial boys. Eucalypt's overflowing. Anyway, it's Ty's problem. All you care about is getting out, okay? Write the statement. 
I don't like the statement. Ty had an accident in his bed. The lamp fell off the table while you were cleaning up, okay? It's the MQFF show, and you just heard a little of The Wilding. We have the filmmaker in the studio, Grant. How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're really not really very well, are you? Surely you've just been travelling. Uh, yeah, I, um, I feel like Shiza. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, over in Berlin with uh, my film The Wilding and just got back yesterday, so I'm feeling a little under the weather, but I'm here. Yeah, well, we're very happy to have you here. Lisa, you're um, going to take over this bit mm-hmm. because I'm sure you've yes. got heaps of questions for Grant. I've always got questions for Grant. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, tell us, how was it? Were you over there for the whole festival? Did you get to opening night and the whole Teddy extravaganza and everything else associated with Berlin that Absolutely. I missed out on? Indeed, yes. Um, <laughs> we got there from day one. Uh, we were in the, a program called Generation, which yep. is, you know, a, a Berlin Film Festival is, is so massive. It's got so many parts to it. And so our section was um, a section called Generation, which is films about young people. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went to opening night. We went through to, you know, our four or five screenings, red carpet premieres, and and then leading up to the, the Teddy Awards, which is such a massive dance party, one of the biggest yep. gay parties in Berlin. And they give awards to um, and nominees to the... The, to the queer films in the festival. Yeah. So we were. So there. how many times did the Wilding screen across the fest? We had five screenings. So we had two Teddy screenings yep. and we had three generation screenings. Right. Okay. And do you get to speak at those screenings and do Q and A's or anything like that? Or are you involved? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we get up um, and do Q and A's, and a lot of the audience with generation screenings are kids, so yeah. you know, kids over the right. age of fourteen. Yep. Um, and so sometimes they have quite interesting questions. And yep. um, and then the the Teddy screenings. Yeah, we got up and, and did Q and A's and talked about you know the politics of yep. making queer films and. And what was the reception like for the film? Really good, really yep. good. The audience um, really got it. We were at first kind of surprised that we'll put in a program for. Um, for teenagers really but then when we got there and we saw all the other films that they programmed in in the generation and we certainly were not and and we're a hard-hitting film we were certainly not the most hard-hitting film in the in the program so the kids in in germany are very sophisticated yeah um and the response from the queer audience was fantastic so we've had um a lot of people come up to us from festivals queer festivals around the world and um and yeah, we've got sales agents interested now. So Brilliant. Do you want to give us a little well. rundown of what the film's about? The Wilding is uh, it's set in a juvenile detention centre and um, it's, it's about a boy called Malcolm who is given a chance at, at parole but his boyfriend is, um, is being picked on and so long as Malcolm can just keep his nose clean and, and not get into any fights anymore then he'll, he'll be able to sort of get out of there but... Um, the more he sees his boyfriend get picked on, the, the harder he finds it is to just not do anything to protect him. So he's given, he's really in a position where he has to choose between his freedom and, and doing something about the, the bullying. Yeah, based on your own personal experience? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so where did the story come from? Um, I was, uh, I'm working on a feature film which is kind of set in that world. Right. And, okay. um, and Screen Australia uh, really liked the film and, and they put us through a springboard program where um, they said, can you write a short film which is kind of similar to the feature? It might have different characters but same feel, same uh, issues. And, um, and they gave us the money to, to make the film. So, yep. so really it came out, of, came out of my feature film. Yeah. In terms of the funding, and this might be useful information for other filmmakers, do you, would you uh, advise younger up-and-coming emerging filmmakers that making a short or writing a short is a good stepping stone to making something longer in a longer form? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's still, uh, it's still the way to, you know, developing a career as a director um, and as a writer or producer is, is to, to work through shorter films. And, and I do think it's a really good idea if you've got a plan for a feature film or if you know a kind of genre that you want to work in to, to do a short which is in that same vein because if the short is very successful, people inevitably turn around and say, well, you know, what are you working on next? What do you want to do next? And if, you're, if you've made a comedy and you actually want to do some psychological drama well there's a kind of 
schism there that people yeah. don't get. Yeah. So I think it's really useful. Yeah, we do see a few films through the festival that uh, that are now features that did start out as, as shorts, which is quite interesting. You know, sort of they come back about three years later. Debs is a good example. It's a you know pretty popular feature film that started out as a short, um, and there's quite a few examples. So uh, often my advice to filmmakers is to you know concentrate on the short form first, and then you know sort of work your way up there and try and get the funders interested through that avenue. Mm, mm, that's right. I mean, hopefully with the success of The Wilding, we might be in a position to be making um, my feature in yep. the next couple of years. So how many shorts have you made? Um, I kind of lose count. That's a good thing. <laughs> and some, and some, um, and some I uh, prefer not to, to think about. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been, making, I've been making shorts over about the last eight years from, you know, when I was a student and yeah. uh, until now. And I, I, I really, I feel like The Wilding is kind of the culmination of all of that. So hopefully The Wilding is the final short and I'd be looking at um, being able to do, do longer stuff from here. Yeah. Are you interested in television at all? Yes, I am. I'm interested in... Um, you know, we make great um, adult drama. Mm. That's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If somebody uh, wants to take a chance on a on any a listeners director. out there working in telly, <laughs> Grant's talented. I'm here. Call Can me. I ask a highbrow question, Grant? I'll try to answer it. <laughs> so I looked at your CV a little, and it said you were, um, let's see, a credit for Dead Twenty Something Number Two <laughs> in the film Noise. So yep. your acting history? Yeah, that was pretty much the beginning and end of my acting. It literally <laughs> says dead twenty something number two. You're not even number one. No, I wasn't even number one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, at the start of noise, there's a, a, a massacre on a train, and I'm one of the victims. Excellent work. <laughs> uh, I think we'll play a little of Grant's short film, The Wilding. Thank you for talking with us, Chukas. Lisa, will you have more questions? Yeah, let's. If Grant's happy to stay for a minute, we can. Uh, we'll just talk about what's coming up in terms of the festival dates and Grant's film, and uh, yeah. You're listening to the MQFF show on Joy 94.9 and that is a little more of The Wilding and our guest Grant is talking about that. That um, so The soundscape seems to be really important in this. Yeah, I mean the, the, the sound design and the, and the music, it's kind of quite spare and then um, at particular points in the film it's really the sound just really gets you in the guts, um, I hope, especially when it's... Um, played loud. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Yeah. Lisa, our festival director, has uh, programmed this as one of the 162 films uh, during uh, the Melbourne Queer Film Festival. You have some more questions for Grant, I'm sure. Well, I did want to say when it's screening and where it's screening. It's actually screening in the Oz Shorts package, which is the City of Melbourne Emerging Filmmaker Award, which is the... Uh, the prize winning award it's like the highlights of the Australian stuff so there's about eight films in that session and The Wilding is one of those and the prize for that is $3,000 cash so I want to ask you how you would spend that if you did indeed win I think it would be pretty hotly contested but uh, I was interested to know how you how you fell into filmmaking is this something you wanted to do since you were a little kid or something you sort of fell into accidentally (laughs) um it, it really is something I, I wanted to do since I was a kid, but really it was storytelling when I was a kid, so I was always writing, and I was always the precocious brat that would write really long stories when all of my friends were writing three-sentence ones, and, um, and I thought I was really smart. Um, and then from there it kind of just twisted into filmmaking. I, you know, my parents bought a camera and it's that same old story, and I just started you know, shooting little stop-motion animations at home and... It just um, is something I've always just kept kept up. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So, what's next for you? Are you going to uh, travel more with the Wilding? I imagine that other festivals will now pick it up because I, I know a lot of my festival colleagues were over in Berlin. They kept uh, taunting me with the fact that I wasn't there. <laughs> so, I know that it will be screening 
probably for the next year or so at festivals overseas. Will you get to travel with that, do you think? Yeah, I hope so. I yep. mean, that um, that's, would be a, a dream if we could, um, you know, I'd love to go to North America somewhere with it, um, you know, in, throughout Asia. It would just mm. be really fantastic to be able to travel with the film. Um, it's hard from Australia because we're so far away. Yeah, but, so uh, expensive, yeah. Yeah, we just try to make it happen. But what I'm up to at the moment, I'm, I'm writing. So, you know, I, as well as directing, I, I write and I'm doing another draft of, of my feature, which hopefully is the final draft, and, um, and then we'll move into shooting it. Fantastic. Yeah. So funding, any funding in place? Do you need funding? <laughs> yeah, we do need funding. There's, um, there's no real funding locked in, yep. but um, we've, we've got people already saying that they want to see this, this draft. So Yeah, yeah fantastic. That'll be next. Do you uh, entertain private funding and that sort of thing, or do you pretty much stick to the, the structured film body funding? Um, I can really only talk about in, term, in terms of the short films, and I've, sure. I've made... Um, Three, which have been financed through um, funding bodies, and then the rest have been private or you know credit card films. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then I did make one film, which was crowd crowdsourced, yes. which is you know you know calling on friends and friends of friends to put in two dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, and it all adds up. Yep. And um, and made a film called Colin the Dog up in Sydney. Right. Uh, that way, so you know you yep. just have to you have to do what you can to. Yeah. Did you do, do the crowd sourcing through an official? way like through the web through website crowdfunding or did you just do it you know sort of privately just putting the word out to your friends through facebook it was a, a bit of both but we we certainly did have a, a like a proper there's a crowdsourcing website called kickstarter mm. and we had our um our, our page up there yeah and um you know raise the money that way yeah it's a fantastic yeah. uh, thing for filmmakers to be able to do that yeah grant thank you for talking about the wilding good luck with the screening thank you Looking and forward. uh shall we throw out some hashtags or um, handles or anything that so that people can follow what yeah, is happening I mean, with the wilding. Have you, you got can, a Facebook page? Yeah, absolutely. You can find us uh, uh, facebook dot com forward slash the wilding or the wilding dot com dot au. And I recommend that. It's uh, twenty three past twelve on a Friday, and Leo's helping us out. Lisa and Danae talking with Grant about the wilding, and we're going to be chatting uh, with. Uh, one of the producers of a documentary called The Cure, up shortly.